In this situation, we have a ball at the top of a ramp. The ball can roll down the ramp, and when it gets to the end of the ramp, it will roll off the end of the desk and will eventually land on the floor. We are interested in the horizontal distance that the ball will travel after it reaches the end of the ramp. To understand this, we're going to have to combine our physics knowledge from a few different topics from P4. To begin with, we know that the ball begins with gravitational potential energy. It is high up, so it has gravitational potential energy. And the equation of gravitational potential energy is mass multiplied by gravity, which at GCSE level we say is 10, multiplied by the vertical height of the ball. It's really important here that we use the vertical height of the ball above the desk rather than the length of the ramp itself. It must be the vertical height. So the ball begins with gravitational potential energy. As the ball rolls down the ramp to the bottom, it gets faster and faster and faster. Its gravitational potential energy is being converted into movement energy, into kinetic energy. We have to assume that this is an ideal situation. In other words, there is no friction between the ball and the ramp, and there is no air resistance or drag. If that's the case, we can say that the kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp is equal to the gravitational potential energy that the ball had at the top of the ramp, because all of the gravitational potential energy will have been converted to kinetic energy. There will be none wasted anywhere else. Now, the equation for kinetic energy is kinetic energy equals half multiplied by the mass of the ball multiplied by the square of the velocity of the ball as it reaches the bottom of the ramp. So let's combine our two equations here because we've said that kinetic energy equals gravitational potential energy. So half mv squared is equal to m g h. Now we can see that we have m on both sides of this equation. That means we can cancel the m's out by dividing both sides by m. So our equation becomes half v squared equals g h. I'm just going to tidy up the equation a little bit now to say that v squared equals, so I'm multiplying both sides by 2 to remove this half, equals 2 g h. And I'm going to do one last step here before we move on to the second part of this explanation, which is to say that g is a constant. The gravitational field strength g is the same wherever you go on planet Earth. 2 is obviously a constant, it's just the number 2. So no matter what we do to the height or the velocity, these two values aren't going to change. That means we can instead write this as v squared is proportional to h. So if I change h, v squared will change. I change v squared, h will change. Now we need to consider the motion of the ball after it reaches the bottom of the ramp. If the table continued on to the right, the ball would continue rolling along the desk at a constant speed. However, the table stops, so the ball will begin to fall to the earth. This will cause the ball to travel in an arc like this and eventually hit the ground. And we're interested in this distance here representing how far the ball has traveled from the bottom of the ramp. A student of A-level physics would, be, would describe this in terms of projectile motion. We don't need to worry about the details of that at GCSE level. What we need to know at GCSE level is that the ball wants to continue traveling in a straight line sideways, but is being pulled to the earth by gravity. The time it takes for the ball to reach the ground is not related to the velocity of the ball traveling sideways. In other words, the time taken for the ball to get from the desk to the floor is a constant and the only thing that will affect how long that time takes is how high the table is and that's not something we're changing so for our purposes we can say that the time taken for the ball to get from the desk to the floor will always be constant no matter how fast the ball is traveling sideways this makes life quite easy for us now because if the ball is traveling at a constant speed sideways we can pull another bit of p4 knowledge out because we know that speed which i'm going to write as v equals distance divided by time. We're interested in this distance horizontally, d. So we can rearrange the equation here. If we multiply both sides by t, we will get d equals v, the speed, multiplied by the time. We've said that that time 
that the ball is allowed to travel sideways before it hits the ground is a constant. So similarly to what we did earlier with v squared and h, we can change this equation to be d is proportional to v. Now what we're interested in remember is how the vertical height of the ramp is related to the horizontal distance that the ball travels. So we need to be able to link together our v squared is proportional to h to our d is proportional to v. So to do this let's square both sides. So we have d squared is proportional to v squared and if we can say that v squared is proportional to d squared and v squared is proportional to h which is what we found out earlier then d squared must be proportional to h. Now this means that if you plotted a graph of height against the distance squared it should produce a straight line relationship between the two quantities. It also means that in order to get twice the distance travelled horizontally you would have to have a height that is four times higher.